What's up guys? Josh back with JF Trading. Hope everyone has been well. I had an amazing time out overseas in Europe. Thanks for asking. Hit up a couple awesome spots with my good friend Alex. We were in Dublin, we were in London, we were in Amsterdam. We were huge Van Gogh fans. Didn't spend any time at the coffee shops. Just all observed all the museums. Didn't do any of the fun stuff. Uh, wink, wink. But thanks for guys for asking. I had a great time. Uh, excited to be back in the markets. I got back last Wednesday. Didn't really feel acclimated enough to start putting out videos, so I wanted to wait till the new week. Uh, we are fresh, and I'm really happy I did that because we had some interesting action on Friday. Uh, we had a big, big top spillover in essentially all the big tech names uh, and, and the overall markets. But I want to start with the spies. Um, we opened about we opened at 9:30 as we always do, and we kind of rallied over the first hour and a half of the day. And then I'm not too sure what exactly took the news. Might have been might have had something to do with the, with the Comey investigation uh, from days prior. But we just rolled over. It was a very, very, very unapologetic sell-off. We bounced, or we sold off quite a few points. It was like three points on the spies overall. Uh, that did not play well into the overall weakness in the tech sector. Tech got hit huge. Um, Couple that with the with the the trailing losses on the spies. We can pull up Amazon here, and we can see just the drastically. This is just I love seeing this. This is this is the highlight of my day when I see a stock that opens at thousand dollars and ten bucks and has a low of $930, man. So if we're having a $50, $40 range, or excuse me, oh my gosh, an $80 range, what am I saying? Uh, that, that's absurd, that's, a, that's absolutely absurd. Uh, tech rolled over. We didn't have essentially one candle to lift us higher on the day. We just started nose diving. At least with the spies, we popped for the first hour and then we continued to sell off. Uh, but that was interesting. Amazon was not ready to see such a big move like that. I remember when I saw uh, my, my monitor, I was like, whoa, I cannot believe Amazon was down to 940 at one point. Um, we're straight up. You guys know the deal. Uh, I'm not even too sure of a relevant level. If you guys want to zoom out into the monthly, I guess we'd have to do some sort of fit retracement all the way up to here. I'd be willing to bet that the 63% well, the is somewhere around uh, in between the 900 and 800 mark. Uh, obviously, we're well above that, so I don't really want to predictively say what's happening. Um, obviously, you guys all keep an eye on this. I don't think anyone's entering a new position into Amazon right now. I'd hope not. If, if you do, if you are, you're an idiot. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me. You're probably long man kind of $9. So, you know the deal. Um, same kind of shit with Apple. Uh, we had that pop in the markets early and then the, the big sell-off. And that does not help when these sort of stocks get moving and get selling. Uh, when those algos and those computer programs really attract and attach to these stocks, it's game over. It's game over from the beginning, as you can see. We had some relative uh, flat action here, and then the first big pop in selling was was down here on some decent volume, which was maybe half, three quarters, three quarters of a million shares. Um, so that really got it going. Then we based, and then we dumped again on just even bigger volume and base dump, base dump, base dump. So this was a very, very, very big day down. A lot of the times you'll get a knee-jerk reaction to the downside, and then you'll get a, re a quick reversion right back to the mean. That's, that did not happen. This blew that out. We were a couple standard deviations down on the day. So that's always interesting. That's definitely, definitely a way of thinking that there might be a top, not actually confirming it, but the fact that we did not revert to the mean basically at all throughout the entire tech sector on the entire day could give you some signs that maybe we're at some sort of tech top here. I don't want to call it, but I just want to throw it out there. Keep it in the back of your minds. Not entirely sure where we head from here, but we are trading lower uh, this morning in tech overall and the markets. So Apple's trading towards the 145.91 level right now. Uh, we opened at 155 on Friday, so quite the big range over the last few days. Um, another stock that has been just doing some crazy shit is NVIDIA. Um, everyone's been watching this. Everyone's been thinking about whether or not they should be buying calls. Uh, some people did. Some people made a killing. But then we had this, this just incredible, incredible day. And this is just highlights so much that's wrong with the market right now, guys. When you have run-ups like this, it takes months and months, maybe even years, to get to a, get it to get a stock to run to these sort of levels. So the beginning of 2015, Nvidia was at $32. We traded at one point at 168.5. So when you get stocks that run like this, it takes so long, but all it takes is two days, one day, three days of just pure selling to really bring your position and your 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 position where you're up hundreds of percent right back down to break even. And it, it, it can really do that and it can really be painful. It's a lot it's a lot easier to lose money to the downside than it is to make money to the upside. So keep an eye on that. This has been a trend shattering move in NVIDIA. Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure where the hell we head from here. We are trading minorly lower this morning, marginally lower, about $147.36, 36 cents I should say. 
So we are, you know, somewhere in this range. So we're gapping down from the close yesterday. Let's see if we can uh, get a stabilizing bid in there. Let's see if we get a pop back above the 150s. I don't really think we do. I really think that was a huge selling um, confirmation in all of tech, in my opinion. Uh, but that we'll yet to see if, if, that, if that plays out. Not entirely sure. Um, if you guys have been following my, my gold and crude analysis, you guys have been spot on. You've been making money. Gold's been acting very predictably, surprisingly predictably over the last uh, couple of weeks. And it seems that I've lost all of my, my drawings. That's very upsetting. Let me see if I can figure that out after this video. Um, but if you can see, we're bouncing off several, one, one of the several fans that lead higher here on this trend, on this trend here higher from the lows of uh, December of last year. Uh, but we've been oscillating pretty well, you know, pretty, pretty statistically significantly. If you ask me, this is a very, very clean, clean reversion. So we have a nice run, revert, clean, revert, uh, and then pop. And now we're kind of sitting around here at this 120, this 1271 level. Um, I like a bounce higher. I personally like gold over 1300 come uh, maybe a year, six months. I definitely think all the global tension is going to start boiling over and things are going to get serious. Um, investors are going to start fleeing into you know safe haven trades like gold and commodities. Let's see if that happens. Not entirely sure. I don't think I'm ever sure of anything, to be honest. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Uh, guys, I'm long Virtue. If you guys want to stick in with that with me, I'm long down here in the 15s. Um, I just like the stock. I like the name. I enjoyed how when they bought out KCG, uh, the stock popped for a day and then immediately sold off. I, I ended up buying at those lows because I'm just like, wait a minute, they added, they added millions of dollars to the bottom line and the stock's selling. So something wasn't right there. There was a clear, uh, there was a clear disconnect in, in terms of investors' logic. So I stepped in, only, only long a couple thousand shares. So I, I like this, I invested a few thousand dollars. I'm, I'm, long, I'm gonna be long this for the next couple of months. Uh, I like this, this play long-term. I, I think it's a great long-term play. I think once volatility in the markets picks up, uh, these sort of stocks, Virtue Financial, Citadel, all the other market makers start killing it. They are only going to be making more money. Every, every quarter they, they increase their trading fees. So it's just a matter of time until the competition shrinks and it's completely fragmented to the point where these two organizations can really start to kill it and print money. Um, we'll see if that day comes. <clears throat> Near term, uh, by let's say July, I want to see, see Virtue above 19. That might be a little too strong of a move. We will see. Uh, but guys, thanks for watching. I'm back. Uh, this is a little, a little longer than normal video. Hope you enjoyed it. If I messed anything up, comment down below. If there's any stocks you'd like to recommend as well, also comment those down below. But I am back. Your boy is back. I will be here doing videos Monday or morning and night uh, for probably the next couple of weeks until I get some stuff going on my own. I'm moving offices, so i got to figure out the situation there. Uh, but thanks for watching, guys. Comment, like, subscribe, do all that crap, and I will be back for you uh, this afternoon. Have a great trading day, boys. Trade smart, build the wall. Oh, what's up guys, Josh back. Uh, Pre-market or post-market I should say, run through uh, kind of a slow day. Uh, all the action's really been in the tech markets. We had a nice little sell off early and then we're bouncing kind of uh, relatively strong here towards the close. Let me get rid of this open interest, it always pops up. Uh, I'm gonna run through gold real quick guys. I love trading gold. Um, if you can see these fans here, they've been holding pretty well. It's kind of a messy looking chart, uh, but we're holding this level at this 1268 point right here, I should say around 1265 to 1268. So we're holding this, this trend line higher. It's a little, little crooked right now. I guess I could, I could fix that. Maybe do one of these guys, boom, boom. Um, that's actually the wrong one. I don't even want to do that. But gold has been, um, you know, the, the, the downward momentum hasn't really, uh, hasn't really picked up. I think we are coming off of more of a knee-jerk pop to the high side above, as you can see, this uh, eight or nine year, um, you know, excuse me, eight or nine year. We're talking, yeah, about seven, six year uh, wedge lower. Uh, we broke above that on, uh, what was that, last Thursday. Um, so that since then, we've just seen some downward pressure. I, I'm not sure investors like gold above the $1,300 level just quite yet. Uh, give it a couple months. I absolutely think gold trades higher. I think, the, I think the bull case for gold is much stronger than the bear case for gold. I think in a time of just absolute panic and pandemonium and uncertainty in the overall markets, I think uh, gold will eventually be seen as a safe haven spot for uh, fleeing capital to kind of get away from the overall markets that are uh, acting a little turbulently. The last couple uh, of days, the markets aren't as down as some of the crazier tech names, Amazon, Apple, NVIDIA, all those guys, Google, all down big the last few days uh, for no apparent reason other than uh, kind of the run up in the Dow uh, as a lot of a lot of that's attributed 
the big run up to a handful of stocks, and they just kind of think it's maybe a little, maybe a little overblown, maybe a little overbought. So we're seeing some 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 correction in that regard. Uh, but in the overall markets, let me pop up this spy chart here. We can see our pivots. Uh, I'm going to add in a new pivot here at this level. I keep doing the goddamn wrong. Uh, wrong tool. So if we get a close around 242, that'll be a strong point. Obviously, the next level to the downside is around 241.89, and then to the upside, it's back in the 243 and a quarter. So keep an eye on that. I think the overall markets are strong. I, I like the markets higher, as do I'm sure everyone else at this point. Unless we unless we get some sort of crazy Trump news where he worked with the Russians, it's proved. You know what I mean? It's proven. Uh, I, I really think we just slowly, slowly trend higher. What kind of freaks me out is how frequently Trump is mentioning how well the stock market's doing. That is just so fucking stupid. It's incomprehensibly retarded. Uh, the second the stock market collapsed, it's going to be his entire fault only because he was promoting it when it was doing well, quote unquote, because of him. So let's see how that plays out. You know, you guys know I'm not, uh, I'm a Trump supporter in the sense that I fucking hated Hillary. I wanted someone to vote for outside of the status quo. And I think Donald Trump's coming through with a lot of his promises. Uh, that being said, the, he's being drowned out by a lot of the media that it's been making it impossible to actually get solid information on what he's doing. Some of the facts, a lot of the, just a lot of the things are so overblown right now. So many people are sensitive and, and a little butt hurt. So it's best to kind of stay on the sidelines and try not to offend as many people as possible. But I'm going to offend as many people as I possible, as I possibly can right now with mankind. Uh, all the bag holders were going bananas last week when they're like, oh, this is it. This is it. This is the run. 70 cents to buck 80 and now we're back down we're trading flat here still nothing nothing clear to the downside not not really shortable i wouldn't even really want to short a stock like this i feel like that short move is obviously over uh only thing that can happen is you get incredibly fucked if we get a squeeze then you're screwed beyond belief so i'm staying out of it i, I tried playing it long in here i got out down here and lost like 10 cents on a couple g but it was simple trade I, I liked it higher. The momentum was there. It didn't really play through as you know expected. It's mankind. It's a horrible company. Super manipulated by all the HFTs too. If you guys aren't aware of that, check it out. There are multiple websites online where you can see the algos running. I'll post links. Um, but that's also another concept that a lot of you guys don't even realize. I mean, unless you're buying and holding for months, it doesn't really matter. But if you're a day trader or you're a swing trader, you need to kind of know uh, about the, the one-sided advantage a lot of these HFTs and algos have. Uh, a stock that's been on my radar for a couple months is UAA. I had been trading it. I actually traded this the day we had that big downward, uh, that big gap from about 30 bucks down to, man, 22. I uh, caught a nice few grand on that. That was a nice trade. Uh, it was just a day trade right at the open. I sold it. Uh, but we're getting a pop above the, the gap here. So we're filling this gap nicely. Uh, it's a nice five-pointer, four-pointer. So it's a big, 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 big gap. Uh, obviously, the stocks run the last few days from about 19 bucks to 23, so not a small move, relatively speaking. Uh, could be a little overblown. Could be a good move to fade, even. You know, sell some options. I don't know how you guys like. Uh, I don't know how you guys like to take your risk. I, I, I consider myself somewhat risk willing. Uh, I'm not too risk averse in the sense that if I see a good risk reward, I'll smack it with some size. Uh, but UAA has been on the move. Weight Watchers is another one. You guys know that stock drives me absolutely insane. Uh, short this entire, I was short in like the 90, the high 19s, caught the entire move down to basically 14 and a half, caught like five points on a few thousand shares. That held me over while I continuously watched this thing run from 14 to 27 in a matter of three months, two months. So that was upsetting. Uh, missed that entire move. All you had to have done was just buy a thousand shares and you made, you made 10 grand. Um, but you know, it is what it is. You admit you win some, you lose some, uh, a lot of the cryptos have been running. I I'll be the first one to admit that I'm not necessarily proficient in the fundamentals or technicals behind some of those crypto markets. I really don't know what the hell is going on with them. I don't think anyone does unless you're some sort of computer programmer that, you know, mines these Bitcoins or Ethereum coins, whatever, you whatever they're called. Not entirely sure. Um, let's see if I can run through one more stock. Uh, Omer is doing some weird things. Omer's Omeros Corp is coming right back to a relative high here at 17 bucks. Uh, the whole number is always coming into play. Always keep an eye out from them. Um, let's see, this thing has crazy potential to run. We had a gap up, we had a gap up $20. So uh, not a stock I want to short, not a stock I want to play long, to be honest. It's been kind of uh, just straight up on a, basically no volume. It's a low floater, so be careful. Uh, that plays into that, guys. Here are the spies just for a last look. So we're trading below this big range. We're now back, back down onto this range here from a few days prior. So let's see what happens. I don't really expect much upside or downside from the markets, maybe in the next couple of weeks. Could be a good put option, a good put spread. 
uh, put a put spread on in the overall markets, take some premium in. I don't think we pop up uh, back to the 245 area anytime soon. I could be wrong. Who knows? Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if I messed anything up, comment down below. If there's any stocks you'd like to recommend, which you fucks haven't been doing, by the way, recommend them down below. Uh, if not, like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. And I will be back with you tomorrow morning for a pre-market run-through, guys. Have a great afternoon. Uh, hope you finish strong. And uh, cheers. Build the wall. What's up, guys? Josh back this morning. Hope the night was well. Hope the night went well. Um, interesting market this morning. Again, uh, tech is back on fire, back in action. Uh, there's going to be a, a drop in options quotes very early just because of all these pricey stocks that are moving. Um, you should follow Eric Hunzender if you'd like uh, that sort of analysis to keep up with that. Uh, but Apple, if you guys can see, we had just a blowout, you know, 155 to $142 move. So quite the move. We're gapping high a little this morning. Could have stepped in and bought the dip. Trading about like a buck 46 and a half. Uh, so we're stabilizing that out. The, the free fall is over, I think. Let's see if we get a midday rally or midday dump. We shall see what exactly transpires. Uh, but watch pretty much every single tech issue there is out there today. NVIDIA, same thing. Uh, we've had quite the run on NVIDIA. Then that entire huge inside day. And then we had a pop up yesterday. And I believe we're gapping higher, a little marginally higher this morning. Uh, you guys know the drill shop. Shop had uh, a pretty pretty beat up day the last few days, I should say. Well, yesterday was kind of a flat day, but the day before was pretty big, 100 bucks to you know 90 to $10 range, about, about a 9%, 10% move. Uh, if you can zoom out to the daily, we can see how we kind of form in this, this base down here at this, this $88 level. We had this huge, huge range, and then the investors and, and traders brought it back up to closer to the $90 level. So that's a pretty big tail. I like to see those when I'm playing reversals. I, I always look for big tails when I see sentiment shift uh, intraday, which is what happened there. So interesting move in shop. Uh, if you guys have been following with my gold and crude analysis, you've been spot on, you've been making money. Uh, we're five legs down here on the uh, gold futures contracts. We are not really seeing any sort of strong signs of reversal. I thought we could have had one here. Uh, I was wrong, ended up popping and then kind of just, just simmering out and trading back lower to the 1263 point i really really like gold long i really like gold above 1300 come uh maybe that maybe june july august or i guess we're in june say come july or august i really really like gold above 1300 we have this double top here you, you could even call it a triple top close to it i really like it higher i think this is a great time to start adding into your long position as the as gold dumps i think it's just a little bit knee-jerk reaction it hasn't gotten too emotional yet Things are going to get emotional and you're going to get these big runs like we did uh, down here of what, December of last year or 15, December 15, January of 16. So anything's possible. Uh, we, we've seen $100 moves very easily in gold. It's not out of the question. Crude's doing the same thing. We set this chart. Crude is bouncing as well. Uh, we're bouncing off the same exact level for the most part down here at the 4538 point. Uh, we came full circle. We had the clear bounce as OPEC decided to do their bullshit, and then we are just right back down. Uh, perfect example of why I don't trade oil. You guys know that, but I like to follow it as a, just a general indicator of the overall economy. Uh, let's see what you stock twatters are talking about over here. STX. What is this guy? Oh, Seagate. That's right. So Seagate. Interesting. We broke a range lower for sure yesterday at the close. Let's see what we look like on the monthly. So we're looking like a decent one, two, three pop. Let's see if we can bounce off that $40 level or if that becomes resistance after we, we, we clash it. Uh, not entirely sure. Markets are uh, generally, generally a little strong this morning. Uh, we're gapping higher. I believe we are into the, uh, we're into the one, 243.80s. So we have, uh, we've been following an interesting market. I, I know I always say that, but there's always action. There's always something happening, which is what I love. So things change on dime. You guys got to keep keep an eye out on your on your levels. Make sure you watch your pivots. Uh, thanks for watching the video, guys. I kept this one short today on purpose. But if you like the if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Uh, I will be back with you for a post market edition video, guys. Best of luck trading. Godspeed. Build the wall. What's up, guys? It's Josh with a post market run through of where we're going right now in the markets. Uh, we are all over the place. We got some gap risk left and right. We had this monstrous, monstrous range from uh, last week. 
Uh, so there is, it's playing within that range as suspected as it usually does. So we closed above this little range here yesterday and now we opened above about three quarters of the way higher and now we're trading above. We are back into this uncharted territory to the upside. Obviously the top wick here at 25, 245 is a point, to, a point of contention to watch, um, obviously. But we are up and down. We're knee jerking all over the place. Not a good market to be trading, in my opinion, right now. You have a lot of overnight risk, a lot of gap risk, uh, a lot of risk in general with just Trump. You know what I mean? I guess we've seen a, a downturn in volatility. Uh, so that was surprising. I'm not sure a lot of people figured that would happen, but it did. So it's a matter of reacting, not predicting. I always like to say that the best trades happen when you react, not predict. You want to see uh, your predictions come into reality before you just blindly hit something and buy it or sell it. Uh, but anyway, this is this is the spies, guys. Let's check out crude. Crude is uh, bouncing, relatively speaking. We uh, popped through the $46 level. I believe we opened right at that point. Let's see, the open was 46.01, look at that. So we are above 46, we're trading higher, above this pivot down here where we had this little this little turnaround on the big wick here. Not convinced this is a full pop or a full uh, a full correction back towards, you know, maybe the $50 level. I think this is maybe just some uh, some late minutes, some late time uh, buying and selling. I don't really think it means much in my opinion. Uh, but as long as we stay above that 45 level, I, I like I like crude higher. Uh, whether that takes six months, I don't know. But let's just keep it above 45. Uh, in my opinion, that's a very, very big level. Um, Virtue, I, uh, I actually just, uh, well, I didn't just, I'm down here in the 15s. I got a couple thousand shares. Uh, I, I bought this stock when they acquired uh, Knight Capital Group on this bar here on this big gap off gap up and then we uh, subsequently just sold off. This is a real, real, real thin stock. Not a lot of volume trades in this. You guys can see it's a real scalper. One cent ranges, you know, nothing. It's no bank of them. Oh, excuse me. It's no Microsoft or Baba or Apple. This thing, uh, this thing has very interesting, small, uh, predictable moves, I guess you could say in a sense. But I'm a little upset that we've run basically $2 since I bought. Uh, you know, so I'm up, I'm up decent right now. I, I like this as a long-term investment, so I'm playing it on the weekly chart. Uh, I think, oh my gosh, where'd my weekly chart go? Excuse me. All right, well, let's just play the monthly. Imagine two more, two more green candles that are in the mix here. Uh, I really, really, really think this stock trades higher over the next six to six to 12 months uh, for a new number of reasons, including just the, the low volatility in the markets. I think that comes back. I think we get uh, an influx of capital eventually once the all these testimonies are over. I have the Jeff Sessions on in the background. He's a fucking idiot. I can't stand that guy. Um, but nonetheless, nonetheless, we're doing our thing. I, uh, I actually bought some, uh, some gold. I went along uh, some GDX today. I, uh, I bought a few options contracts, some calls, uh, when we traded above the 1265 point, we're now kind of just hanging out around the 1270 point right now. So let's see if we get a push through that. Um, I've been saying this for a while. I do like gold long term above 1300, maybe the next couple of months. Let's see where that thing trails. Uh, but we are, you know, coming up on this big trend line from uh, what was it, 2011? Yes, August of 2011. So that's a very big level to keep an eye on. So we have one touch, two touch, three touch, and now four touch. So let's see if we get a pop through that. It's obviously a very relevant level. Anything with more than two to three touches, you, you know, that's what I like. That's just a general rule of thumb that I follow. Uh, so let's see what plays out with crude. You guys can see the daily here. We're kind of just, you know, wave high, wave A high, wave, wave below, wave high high. Uh, and we're kind of just doing this the oscillating price value. That I'm, we're, just, we're just trading higher. I can't speak right now, guys. I apologize. Uh, I've been a little out of it. Uh, let's see what stocks are trending in stock twats. Hertz is uh, is popping. Look at that. We are up 75 cents, about eight and a third percent. Uh, a nothing move. This is just a little shakeout. Don't think it's anything meaningful. Um, we are uh, at all time lows, I believe. Uh, just about uh, five dollars away. Excuse me. So not all time lows, but we're you know within five percent, ten percent of the uh, a little bit more than that, I should say. But we are within. Uh, relative range of the all-time lows. The stock's been out of favor essentially since the highs of August of 2014 in the summer. So not a lot been doing in that stock or that name. Omer, what's the deal with this guy right now? Oh no, that just happened. So I am gonna go ahead and finish the video, guys. Thanks for watching. Sorry about that. Oh, we're back. I'm not ending. Ah. So let's type in Omer real quick. Let's check out that guy. So we have another leg higher. Wow, I have not been paying attention to this stock. Uh, so we, wow, 
So we traded right to this point here yesterday, and now let's see where we opened at. So yeah, look at that. Wow, that's a that's a nice day. So we opened right above that seventeen dollar level, and it's just been off to the races since. Um, not a lot of volume, guys. This is a thin one, but it's a mover. Kind of looks like Bitcoin right now. <laughs> Uh, but in all seriousness, this is you know what I mean, just a parabolic move. A lot of things. It could be. A, it could. It could literally be for any reason in the world. There's nothing in particular. Uh, to me, that's that stands out. I'm sure there's some sort of news. I don't really keep up with it. I'm more of a technical uh, price action trader. Uh, but that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Appreciate the time. Uh, if you like what I said, why don't you comment? Uh, comment on this. Recommend a stock you like me to cover. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, if not, I'll be with you guys tomorrow morning. All right. Have a nice night, guys. Cheers. What's up, bitches? It's Josh. I'm back. Thanks for watching. I am sorry I didn't finish my videos last week. I had some stuff come up in business. Did not get around to it. Uh, we are at the bottom of the range. If you guys have been paying attention, the markets have not been uh, performing very favorably. Had an interesting day here on this trend line. If you can see, this goes all the way to the bottom of that. I believe this was the China crisis back in last year. Um, so interesting to see us hold that level with, uh, you know, maybe two cents to spare, a cent to spare. Uh, we are trading marginally uh, higher this morning uh, on the back of all of the uh, Trump news and all the, avoiding the government shutdowns. There's a lot going on right now, a lot of macro uh, economic stuff in hitting the tape. Also, there's going to be some economic announcements this week as well, I believe. Don't quote me on those. I've yet to really double check. Um, but keep an eye on the 1240, 250 level. Very important. Let's not crack that uh, big trend line to the downside. Let's see some more action higher. Uh, but let's jump into a couple some, some stocks. Before, actually, let's jump into crude before we or gold before we do. Excuse me. I am long and strong gold. I'm adding into these pullbacks here. Let's see how that works out. I really, really, really think that gold is a fundamental long uh, for the next couple of years. Even um, you know. Gold tends to, uh, you know, appreciate in price when uh, investors think the Fed kind of has no idea what the fuck they're doing, and that's kind of where I think we're at right now. I'm not entirely sure the Fed's raise or the Fed's gradual uh, interest rate increases are going to affect the bottom line as drastically as they think they will. I think it'll definitely help banks profit and start printing a little bit more cash. They'll be able to lend out higher over the prime rate. So there's definitely a bullish bet in financials, but gold seems to be lagging a little bit. Trade seems to be taking a little longer than anticipated. That's why I've slowly been accumulating my long position into these pullbacks. It's allowed me to get some very good prices as well as some good fills. So I, I, I have a very long bias in gold. I think we get a pop above 1300 sooner or later over the next couple of months even. Um, let's see what that is, guys. And then obviously Amazon, Jesus Christ, what the hell is the news with them? Uh, quite the chart. Uh, we cracked the thousand dollar level and then one, two, three, four, five. We had four days before shit went horrible. This is why we can't have nice things. Uh, we had a huge, Jesus, almost hundred dollar flash. Uh, not flash, but range, I should say, in Amazon on uh, the 7th of June. Or excuse me, the, tw the 9th of June. And then we kind of just been rocking back and forth since. Then they bought Whole Foods. Like, what in the world? So Amazon is now getting into the retail uh, grocery business. Let's see how that plays out favorably for them. Had a couple of uh, a couple of relatives actually tell me that they bought Whole Foods after the fact. I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, Jesus Christ! How do you like? Just the thought process behind retail investors honestly blows my mind a little bit. Um, you know, it's it's not easy to trade. It's not easy to make money trading, but it's even easier to lose money trading when you just don't know what you're doing. So I, I'd really suggest paying attention and understanding how uh, it, at it, what it is to trade and what it means to trade. I think it's very important. Um, Clovis, obviously everyone follows Clovis. This is, this is one of the big oncology names. Um, we are at a relative level. We bounced pretty hard off that 50 point. Wasn't, wasn't clean, wasn't flat, about two bucks off, but we did hold that clear support. Uh, we are now trading back closer to the 60s. We had a nice doji on uh, Friday, I believe. So let's see, we are, uh, oh yeah, we're popping very high this morning. <laughs> we're up $30, excuse me. Um, to, uh, to a quote of 8335 right now. I'm not entirely sure what the news is. Let's see. I'm sure it's some sort of cancer or something. So we're clearing all of these levels and we're going to be opening up somewhere around here. Um, let's see. Da, 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 halted. Can someone please tell? Class action lawsuit settlement on expense formula insurance. That can't be it. Uh, just must be watched. New market, Clovis. Oh, yeah, it must be the action lawsuit. Dilution of 4 million shares. 
plus market cap. Interesting. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on right now. We're getting a $30 gap. Uh, my condolences if you're short, rest in peace. That's not great. Um, if you're long, phenomenal. Well done. You just made 30 bucks. Sell it all. Uh, go get yourself a nice steak for lunch. Uh, let's talk about Mankind because we all love Mankind. Um, this stock is, uh, if you talk to the retards online, very undervalued. If you talk to a lot of the smart guys online, very overvalued. Uh, this is one of those names that people are fighting about. Huge bull, bull bear fight going on right now. A nice little battle royale. Uh, let's see if we can clear this $1.82 level. If we do, then it's obviously a good sign that this thing could run. We can get some short covering and we can get a nice pop in price. Not entirely sure. I don't think anyone is. I personally don't like the stock. Had a nice try getting long in here. Sold it in the first big day down. Lost like 10 cents, whatever. Lost a few hundred. Uh, obviously, I'd be willing to play. I, I'm not. I, I don't. I don't judge when it comes to playing certain names. You know, a stock's a stock, and money's money. So I'm willing to. Uh, I'm willing to make any of that. Uh, Boeing. Boeing. Boeing is uh, posting all-time highs. If you believe that. Um, that stock, man, that could have been a great buy back down here, but you know, it is what it is. Could have bought it for a low of 20 bucks, 30 bucks, excuse me, in the low of the financial bubble. So that could have been a phenomenal play. Oh, you know, actually I forgot to cover crude. Crude is, let me pull up this chart. Ta, 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 doom, doom. So crude is bouncing relatively speaking. We're off of this 44.15 level. Uh, back above 45. Let's see if we can hop above the 45 39 level here. That was pretty big support, which is now resistance um, If we can then I like uh, I like a lot of oil names higher whether it's distribution plays or uh, ex Exploration plays I think with the increase in oil prices uh, we get some bottom line growth uh, with a lot of these, uh, these midstream oil and gas companies. Let's see if that plays out if that plays true uh, one more name. Let's do uh, cost. So let's type in cost. Uh, we're getting. We had a big, big, big poundage yesterday or Friday uh, in, in Costco. It was uh, not even really sure. It must have been on the back of that, that Amazon Whole Foods takeout. The whole retail space got clobbered. Um, but we, you know, this is just another one of those stocks that's at all-time highs. You know, I, I really don't feel comfortable investing for the long term at these levels. I don't really think momentum-wise we get a big push past this. I think psychologically speaking, investors are below this sort of level, this sort of, what, $245 level in the spies and then the 20 whatever thousand in the Dow. I'm not sure our psychology has creeped above that yet. I, think, I still think we're closed-mindedly below that. Uh, but let's keep an eye, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm back. I'll be making videos like I usually do. If you like the stuff, like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any recommendations, please comment those down below. If I messed up, please comment those down below. I would love to shit on myself as well. Uh, hope all is well, guys. I am back. Thanks for watching. I will be back with you this afternoon on the Aftermarket Edition, guys. Best of luck trading. Build the wall. What's up, guys? It's Josh. I am back here with a uh, post not really post market, but you know, closer to the aftermarket hours, uh, run through the markets. Uh, up on the screen now is gold. We are coming right for the 200 day moving average today. I hate to use moving averages, but I had to throw it in there just to kind of give me some confidence with this trade. Uh, looks pretty nasty on the daily. If you zoom out to the weekly, you can kind of get a feel for what I'm thinking. Uh, so we had this pretty big drawback or pr pretty big pullback in gold prices back in the beginning or the end of last year, the beginning of this year. And then we've slowly seen increasing prices. We've gotten higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, barely, higher lows, barely. Let's see how far uh, this consolidation pulls back to. Odds are we get a pop or a bounce off of the, basically where we're at right now, the 1245, 1244 to 1246 level, uh, which is what we are currently trading at. I've been getting long uh, this entire way. I'm going to be still getting long. Maybe uh, I think the trend breaks if we get a if we get a, a push below two or 1220. Not entirely sure we see that uh, so soon. I want to I want to think we bounce off this 200 day moving average. Just psychologically speaking, it's a big level for investors. So got to keep your eye on um, those certain levels. Uh, the spies are posting all time highs yet again. Well, I guess the, the S and P 500 futures did not necessarily the ETF. Uh, just because of the, the way things are weighted uh, but let's pull that up just for shits uh, I mean we're at all-time highs again guys uh, it's just the story of the day you know buy the pullback all-time highs buy the pullback all-time highs uh, markets don't really seem too afraid of Donald Trump right now which is a good thing and a bad thing I think uh, too much bullish uh, tone, tone 
uh, will give rise to uh, an impending uh, very, very dramatic uh, collapse, whether that happens in stock prices, gold prices, future prices, or you know, Forex prices, who knows? Uh, I, I definitely think uh, you have to tread, tread carefully with uh, this territory of where we're at in the markets right now. I, I really don't have any confidence in, in regards to uh, you know, going long at these points and these levels uh, in the markets. The, to think that you know the last basically eight years we've been straight up for the most part uh, with the biggest pullback at being being four or five percent um, not too sure it's comfortable uh, to invest here in this 244 244 dollar level I remember down here I remember in the 240s 235s was saying like damn I don't want to invest there but I guess that's just the old adage you just got to buy the dips and you just got to hold and pray uh, not the type of investing that I like to do obviously but you know people have been making money uh, crude is setting up pretty interestingly as well. Uh, we're at the bottom of this range here, this forty to fifty dollar range, or towards the bottom of that. Uh, we had a, a nice pop this morning on some news, and then we immediately sold off, and we're now trading below the two hundred day moving average, uh, around the forty four flat, forty four thirty to forty four flat uh, level. Let's see what type of bounce we get. I, I, I believe that crude has been uh, quite in favor over the last couple of months. I want to say that you know certain corporations have been adding to their positions, speculating that gold will be above the fifty dollar level. Uh, you know, maybe by the end of the year, who knows? Obviously, I've said this once. Said it, I'll, sell, I'll say it again. I don't really trade crude. I especially do not trade uh, futures, crude futures. Who knows what happens in those? Uh, but, you know, certain stocks, certain crude stocks, certain energy stocks I, I've invested. I'm long DTE down, you know, years ago back in the 30s. So, I mean, I own some of this right now. So there are names to trade in regards to crude. I just stay away from the futures as a whole. Those things are very fucky sometimes. And if you're not careful, they can really, uh, really pop you. Um, let's see. What else is on the list today? Oh, man. Weight Watchers, guys. Fucking Weight Watchers, $15 later, and we are at $30 flat. I, I just, I honestly can't believe it. This just goes to show how important it is to be able to identify trending stocks. I had this thing, I caught this entire move from the $19 level to the $14.5. I think I caught $4.5, $5, and then just ignored this. I ignored it. I did not think this would pull up 100% of this pop up on that Oprah news. I did not think that. But you really got to follow that. You really got to identify these stocks that are just trending higher. And I, I, I ignored the trend and I missed it. And I am definitely kicking myself. But we're at a pretty big level. If you pull out to the weekly, you can see that. Um, so we're full circle. You know, you really don't see U-shaped patterns like that in the stock market. You don't really see a full reversal to the downside and then a full reversal to the upside. Uh, obviously, this is one of those weirder names with Oprah being involved and, you know, the weight plans, all this shit. There's a bunch of celebrities endorsing it. So you got to be careful in that, in that regard. Um, but I don't know. Like this is, we're at an interesting point right now. Is this the, you know what I mean? Is this the, is this the rip before we get bought out? Like what's going on in Weight Watchers right now? I don't think anyone knows. Well, I take that back. I'm sure a handful of people know. But most retail investors don't have a clue of what's happening right now. I mean, look at this. This is a straight shot from 15 to 30 dollars with, you know, pretty big wicks, pretty big candles here. But you know, shit, just straight up. So quite the move. Keep an eye on that, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the videos. Uh, if you liked it, like, comment, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. If I said anything wrong, comment that, comment that down below as well. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Cheers. What's up, girls? It's Josh back with JF Trading. Hope the day is going well. I am just getting going here on my end. Uh, we are seeing some selling action in crude real early this morning. We cracked this big pivot line. Uh, to the downside, we're now trading about 43.58 quoted. Um, we are almost in free fall territory. If we get past this $40, $42, $41 point, uh, then that will put us uh, at odds with this part of the, uh, the, the, this segment of the trend back here. I think if we get a correction below $40, it is game on. It is, uh, you know, the sellers are going straight to the, straight to the bank. A lot of money to be made to the short side in oil right now, especially with all of the instability in the Middle East and the, the literal proxy war going on in Saudi Arabia right now in Syria. So a lot of shit going on with oil. I'm not necessarily sure if the thesis is right in the sense that it's dumping. I, I definitely think. Let me readjust this. Hello, hello, hello. I definitely think that uh, decreasing oil prices can be seen as a good thing, especially at a time of war. Not entirely sure if we get a pop out of that, uh, but we are trading around the $43 level. Uh, you can see we had a pretty big drastic dump uh, this morning. 
uh, the second the market's open. So we're down here on these levels. Let's see how much of a pullback we get past that point. Um, the overall markets are trading pretty flat this morning. Let's type in ES. Let's see where we're going. So yeah, we're pretty flat right now. We're just bouncing off right, right off the 200 day moving average. If we go to the daily, we can kind of get a bigger picture where we are right now. So we're at all time highs. It's like, Jesus, do we get another lift? Do we get another pop to the 2460 area? Or do we kind of just chop around in this new range here? Who knows? Let's see what happens. Let's keep, uh, let's trade safe, trade smart. No reason to really be pushing it right now unless you get a big pop in the morning. Uh, gold still not bouncing. Uh, we're getting a small little lift here off of that 200 day moving average, like I said yesterday. Don't really expect it to be a straight shot. Dead cap bounce right back higher. Uh, unfortunately, um, the gold the gold trade has been to the short side for the last couple of days. Uh, I'm really hoping that we get a clean bounce and I can add my position around this level. Actually, might even add towards the 1244 level, which I believe is the 500 day moving average or 200 day moving average. Excuse me. So that level is yeah 1244. So let's see a test of that. I'm probably gonna be adding around that level. I, I still like gold long, guys. I've been saying it, I'll say it again, say it once before, say it again. Um, check that out. Make sure you keep an eye out on gold. If you look at the weekly, you can really see the, um, you know, the, the variability in the stock price or the, the asset price, the commodity price, I, sh I should say, in the last six months. So there's a lot of upside in my opinion, especially with the catastrophic events going on in the world right now. Um, if you look into the daily, you can kind of get lost and confused sometimes. But if you look at the weekly, you can really see how we're just a clean shot away from the 1300 point. Uh, we've been, you know, testing it, pulling back, making a higher low, testing it, pulling back, making a higher low. So I do like the the, the thought process in that gold will become uh, will appreciate with the, uh, the the change in seasons as well as the change in political atmosphere. Definitely think gold is the place to uh, put the money for now. Uh, let's see let's see how right I turn out on that one um, <clears throat> other than that guys I think from now on I'm gonna start just covering for my own sake I'm just gonna be covering the futures markets you know crude gold the spies uh, I'm not really gonna be jumping too specifically into uh, a lot of things so if you want we can talk about hogs hogs seem to be breaking out here at this point if we go to the monthly we can really see where we're at we're basically at the 50 percent uh, inflection range of where we've been at for the last 15 20 years so nothing really exciting happening in this market. Uh, it's definitely something to keep an eye on, though. Uh, in, in regards to it being an indicator for future you know, economic output, I don't know. Uh, I'm not that great of a trader, guys, unfortunately. Um, so why don't you guys, um, why don't you guys check, my, check out my video from yesterday, and I will be back with you guys this afternoon for a post-market run-through of where we are at in the markets. Make sure to add some stocks in Flavor of the Week style. But thanks for watching, guys. I will be back with you uh, tonight. Have a great trading day and don't do anything stupid. Yo, what's up guys? It's Josh back with JF Trading. Just a real quick recap of the market. So theme of the day today, I wanna say was oil. Uh, we're at year lows, yearly lows uh, on the uh, the crude, light sweet crude oil futures backslash CL for anyone who's following. Um, we have seen some overall weakness. We started the day off positive yesterday, then we sold off mid afternoon and now we are on its second leg down to the 43 mark. Uh, the next big level of support, in my opinion, comes down to this 43 hole number or even down to 42. Uh, let's see us get below this wick down here. That'd be, uh, you know, some confidence to the short side that crude continues to sell. Uh, very interesting what's going on right now that we're breaking out of this wedge to the downside. I'm sure a lot of investors have this thing popping back into the high 50s. Uh, we've taken a uh, reflationary trade back towards the low 40s and we've cracked all three of these big trend lines down. So uh, we're almost in free fall territory uh, in, a, in, a, in a sense. Um, something to keep an eye on is, like I said, the $42 level, but the $40 level is also very psychologically uh, driven. If you can see, this was clearly the bounce, around the bounce point for this big collapse that we had uh, back in 2014 and in the beginning of 2015. So watch oil uh, like a hawk, definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, the spies are back into this intermediate range, the 240, 428 down to 243 and a half. Uh, we're back in this range that we've been in for about a month. Let's see if we crack this, this, this support line here down to the 242, maybe even low 243s. Not entirely sure we get that. I mean, there's just not a question that we're just going to chop around here for a little bit. 
Hopefully nothing bad hits the tape and we don't get another four or five percent correction. I mean, worst comes to worst, we do, and we uh, we get an opportunity to buy, which is always nice. Um, but let's keep an eye on the spies. Really nothing going on right now, in my opinion, in on that front. Volumes down a little bit as well. So really quiet day overall. We started off, we gapped up a little higher. We were trading marginally flat the open and then just complete sell off in the in the morning and the afternoon sessions. So very weak. Uh, gold is also setting up pretty poorly. Like I've been saying, I'm long. Uh, we're, we're trading off of this pretty big trend line here. Uh, if I zoom out to show you what exactly that level is, let me go to a daily. Uh, you can see how it is, uh, you know, forming off of the lows down here in uh, December of last year. Uh, we had a pot, we had a spot here, and then we had a spot here. So we have the 200-day moving average, and we have this basically seven-month trend line here. Uh, for some big confirmations to the short side in gold. Let's see if we can get through both of those levels. They're both pretty big levels. Gold has been pretty quiet in my opinion today. Uh, we haven't really seen a whole lot of action. It all really happened back here on uh, last Thursday or Wednesday, Thursday and Friday is what really set the tone for the last week in my opinion. Uh, I think this has been uh, late traders to the game, you know, getting their shorts off, maybe covering some, or excuse me, getting their shorts off, adding to their positions. I think we do get a bouncer on this level here. I, I bought another couple contracts today, still getting long gold. I, I really think it goes trades above 1300 uh, come the, the next few months. I, I'm, I, don't, I think the world believes that the Fed is a little more hawkish than they actually are. So I'm not entirely sure that they go ahead and increase rates three or four times, whatever they're predicting this year. I think it might be, uh, I think this might be the last announcement of the year. Just a hunch I have, no logic behind it. Um, just, a, just an idea. If I can pull up the actual gold chart, we can see how multiple fans of this, uh, this level has broken. So we're dangling right back here on this low right here. We've cracked the intermediate and then the high, and now we're trading back towards 1240. So let's hope we get a bounce off the 200-day. Uh, uh, that would be nice. We've had a pretty big pullback from you know essentially 1300 back down to uh, 1250, 1244, so about a 50-point move. Um, very, very uh, typical. I like how we, uh, we have been fluctuating in prices, though. We're making higher highs and higher lows. So let's make sure that we keep above 1240 in gold. Uh, 1230 is questionable territory when I start maybe considering uh, a cover. Not entirely sure we get there yet just because of the wick today. You never know. So it's best to keep, keep, your, keep your head on the game. You know, make sure you're following the markets. Make sure you understand uh, the you know, macroeconomic implications of uh, appreciating gold prices. Then once you have an understanding and idea, bigger picture that you can go ahead and invest. But only until you have that view, I wouldn't recommend uh, doing any sort of investing. Uh, that's it though, guys. Thanks for watching. I will be back with you tomorrow for a pre-market run through, guys. Hope the day went well. Cheers. What's up, guys? Josh for a pre-market recap. Uh, hope you guys had a nice night. I am gonna be starting with gold. So we gotta bounce off the 200 day uh, and this, this, middle, this middle fan trend line here. Uh, so, you know, setting up for a decent day to the upside, I hope. Let's see how much continuation we get to the upside. Uh, if you can see the trend line, you know, it has that one touch, one touch, and then the third touch here. Um, it's perfectly lining up with the 200-day moving average. It's also something I like. I like when levels like to uh, overlap each other. Uh, but we're bouncing. We're bouncing off of the 1243.90 level. we we'll see if we can get back into the 1250s. Uh, you know, midday, I'd like to see gold back into the 1250s for some real confirmation that... Uh, Prices are strong once again. Uh, if you can see, we've been having these these big these big draws, these big these big runs, and we had a nice little pullback, nice little run, pullback, little run, pullback. The only thing that's worried me is the the, the length of the runs have has shortened pretty drastically over the last uh, three uh, big pushes higher. So let's see what type of action we get to the upside here in gold. I'm hoping that we can pull through. And, and keep these gains rather than um, you know trade higher and then dump later in, in, in the day and you know erase the gains for the day. Let's see what happens on that front uh, with crude. Crude is doing the same song and dance. We still haven't really found a bottom. Uh, if you want, you can actually put a, a pivot down here. Uh, we're bouncing off the 43.36 level. Nothing really happening. I think uh, people are going to be trying to catch a falling knife with this one. So I definitely think crude runs a little bit lower. Uh, let's see if we can get into the $42 level. That'd be pretty big. Um, if not, then I think we trade around this $50 to $44 level for quite some time in between these two uh, these two pivots, just kind of like the spies have been doing the last couple of weeks, or the last week and a half, I should say. 
So if you look at the spies, we've been just chopping, bouncing around these levels here. I'm going to put a pivot down here for this guy. Uh, but yeah, it's been pretty range bound overall. Not a lot of action to the upside or the downside. It's been pretty mixed. Uh, a lot of chop. A couple of my, a couple of my active, my very active friends were traders. Uh, say the same thing. Volume's not amazing. Chop's kind of been shitty, and uh, all the action for the most part's been in the oil sector, uh, with oil coming to uh, yearly lows. So there's a lot of it's triggering a lot of selling from a lot of algos. <clears throat> so interesting on that in, on that front in that regard. Uh, what exactly is going to be happening with uh, certain levels being broken and then uh, that triggers selling programs and that really you know exacerbates the problem that we have uh, in the overall markets. I think it was Kroger the other day that had a pretty big, oh no it was KKR, that's what it was, KKR. I love, I love checking these out. So if you can see this 10% flash here, um, this is going to be the death, the death nail of the stock market one day. I really, really, really think this. This is... Uh, this was a fat finger trade. This was someone, you know, hitting too big of an offer that, uh, or too much size of an offer that they should have been, and it sent the stock price up 20%. So this is going to be a huge, 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 huge issue once most of the securities, uh, you know, not 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 entirely every stock has HFTs trading within them. Most of them do. I wouldn't even say most of them. I'd say the top 10% of volume traders uh, have some sort of algos running within them. But once that sort of spreads out to the more, uh, you know, less volume ish, you know, stocks that trade less volume, then I think we're going to get some drastically horrible moves like this. And it's going to really, really scary and fuck you up sometimes. Uh, I know it's very, very scary and uh, drastic when you're stuck with size and you see something running fucking 10%. So uh, the spies are trading down a little here, marginally lower. Um, the next recent level, the next relative level, I should say, is the uh, the, 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 the 1242.50. Let's see if we can bounce or hold off that point. If we do, then you know there's a good good chance we stay within this range here of this day, which was 245 to 242. So a nice three dollar range in the spies. Not a lot of action. I think the next sort of lift we get to the upside or the downside, depending on how the markets interpret it, is a lift in interest rates. So let's see how bullish or dovish the Fed turns out to be. Uh, we can adjust our trades uh, based off of their reactions. I know if they tend to in raise interest rates, gold tends to underperform in the first quarter. Let's see if that holds true. I really do like gold long. Uh, I'm honestly not at the point where I like the stock market long. The spies, I, that's not, I'm not there yet. Uh, you know, I could get there once I see some overall, you know, stronger economic information, information or stronger economic data out of out of the Federal Reserve. So let's let's keep an eye on that. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. You know, I'm trying to just trying to change the, the tone of these videos a little bit. I'm going to be just running through, you know, just true market uh, fundamentals, the market strength uh, principles to kind of help me understand where things are, where things might be going, and where things have gone. So thanks for watching. I'll be back here at around 3.30, 3.40 for a uh, post-market recap. Uh, but thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have a great day. Take care. Hey, what's up, guys? Josh back for a quick recap. Um, you guys know the drill. We are uh, we range bound. We're range bound as per usual. We're stuck in this four dollar, two dollar, three dollar range from the two forty ones all the way to two forty five. Uh, nothing really happened. Markets are kind of sideways. We're still trying to di still trying to digest uh, the sluggish, bearish move the crude has had in over the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, crude has been the flavor of uh, the month, if you'd like to say. Uh, a lot of the financials, including some of the tech stocks, and then on top of that are all the oil stocks, which are happening to be the most active stocks uh, on most of the exchanges as of, the, I'd say, the last two or three weeks. Um, a lot of action to the downside. Uh, America is about to be producing, I think it's 100 million barrels a month or something crazy like that. Uh, it's a number It's a number that we haven't touched uh, in, I think, 10 years or something like that. So. Uh, a lot of it's a lot of supply concern in uh, in regards to the oil markets. I think that's why we're a little sluggish here in the overall uh, volumes down a little bit. We're much we're well below the uh, the 50 day trailing average of around 70 ish million shares. We're a little bit below 50 right now. Yesterday we posted around 56 million. So you know volume sluggish, not a lot of action going on. Very range bound, choppy plays. Uh, not a lot of upside. Not a huge amount of downside. Uh, it's more about reacting intraday. You know, getting a good feel for how something's going to trade, and then establishing a position, and then just working it from there. 
Uh, but let's pull up crude. If you guys can see, we've just been collapsing. Um, we've had you know pivot fail after pivot fail after pivot fail. So I'm going to put another guy down here. Uh, we're now testing this 42 and a half level after testing both 44 and 43. So interesting to see how uh, how weak oil's been over the last uh, you know basically two months, month and a half. Uh, very weak. Most of the oil stocks have been getting pounded up pretty badly. Um, if you think you could even maybe consider, you know, there being a sort of trend here downward this way. Uh, let's see how deep this correction uh, goes. Let's see where we get an eventual pop and a pullback. Uh, I like to think that the next relevant level, uh, which is where we're at right now, will be anywhere from the 41 to $40 level. The whole number will probably be important. Uh, most of the time it is the $40 level. Most whole numbers are always pretty relevant, especially when it comes to commodities like this. Um, so keep an eye out on cr or on crude, excuse me. I, I like uh, oil lower. I want to see oil back into the low 30s. That'd be very interesting. Uh, that would put an interesting uh, effect or dynamic on um, you know the interest rate environment right now. A lot of these oil companies own a ton of debt, so there's issues going on with uh, some of their delinquency payments. Um, so there's a lot of just a lot of a lot of shit going on right now uh, with the oil markets that you really need to pay attention to before you start or before you decide to invest. Uh, before I jump in, I gold bounced, so we're, we're bouncing sort of off this moving average, right off this trend line from the bottom of, of what is this? This is December of last year. So we're bouncing first, you know, little pop we've had in three or four days. Uh, it's definitely good to see. It's not, you know, it's not a huge move. It's not really something that's giving me uh, encouragement to think that the move lower is over. Perhaps if we can get above 1250, then it'll make me feel a little bit more comfortable about where gold is going. Um, but like I said, I've been trading it around this point. I, I got a little bit long in this position, got a little long in this position, and then I've been getting long here at this base that's been forming around this trend line and the 200-day moving average. Thesis being that I think gold appreciates uh, as oil markets, uh, you know, collapse, and a lot of these, uh, a lot of these oil companies try to figure out their debt payments on a lot of the fixed, a lot of the bonds that they uh, they, they sold. Uh, it'll get a little tricky. I think once, just whenever you're in an environment that seems tricky, that feels wrong, gold is always a good, a good, uh, a good investment in my opinion. Uh, I'm pretty long gold, a couple thousand dollars, nothing huge, but it's definitely a decent sized position for me. I want to see a big bounce. I want to see, I want to see a straight shot through 1260, and then you know maybe let's get to the 1280s and we can have a nice little pullback here. But I definitely want to see it complete the fan. I want to see this thing get back right up to this 1275 level and test that. Let's see, we'll see what kind of action that provides. Uh, overall, though, markets have been relatively uh, quiet in a sense. You know, a lot of just digestion going on, a lot of range bound plays, a lot of uh, quiet selling going on. If you ask me, uh, in the overall markets, you can really see how the the day will start off with a little bit of selling, and then we'll either recover or we'll just you know bounce back to the to the mean and kind of just hang out there for a little bit. So we finished the day, or we started the day, excuse me, trading marginally lower. And we got another buy the dip opportunity. Uh, and I, I, I expect that that's what's happening down here at these levels as well. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Oh, actually one more, one last topic I wanted to cover, SeaWorld. SeaWorld is at a huge level right now and it just had a incredible spike in options volume. Uh, but someone bought, let's pull it up right now. Someone bought, it's like 78,000 contracts on the 20 January 18, 19 puts. So uh, half of that position was written, half of it was bought. I had a guy who, uh, I had a friend who was actually involved in the transaction, wink, wink. Uh, so big, 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 big bet on SeaWorld below, uh, you know, $20 come, uh, you know, two years from now. So I, like I said, half that position was written. So you don't know uh, how immediately they're going to be wanting SeaWorld to just dump. So we're off the lows here at $11. I believe this was when uh, Blackfish... This is when Blackfish hit. Oh no, that, that's, yeah, yeah, it was 2014. So that's when Blackfish hit. Blackfish hit, and it's kind of just put it into this new range of 22 to 14 bucks, or 22 to even 16 bucks, you could say. And we've had some, you know, decent standard deviation moves down here, back up to the, to the mean. Uh, but we're now testing that, that pretty important level. We're at it right now, 1565 quoted bid. Um, let's see what happens. I'm not entirely sure I want to be shorting this stock. It's got buyout potential, I, I, I want to say. Uh, but you know, keep an eye on it. It's definitely an opportunity to uh, you know make a good trade and be involved in a stock that's completely out of favor, uh, and you know could bring in a couple nice couple points. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll be back with you tomorrow morning. Cheers.